Thank you very much uh, for, for this kind uh, presentation. Once again, um, we had yesterday a very uh, successful and interesting prostate uh, cancer session. So today we, um, <clears throat> I will present um, uh, the brachytherapy experience in breast cancer. Um, <clears throat> once again, thank you very much for, for organization of this uh, wonderful, outstanding Congress. I uh, will start with uh, the uh, lit. Uh, so first of all, uh, we are talking about uh, breast cancer, uh, which is the most important cancer entity worldwide with uh, the highest incidence worldwide, as you can see here, of 2.4 million cases uh, everywhere in the world. Um, and then uh, uh, breast cancer brachytherapy means also a very short um, ultra hypofractionated protocol with intrinsic advantages, which would be, uh, of course, radiobiological um, in sense of high effectivity, because this is as well as it is prostate cancer uh, tumor with uh, low beta. Um, then um, we have discussed that yesterday also in the corona context even after the pandemic, I, I think uh, short protocols, hyperfractionation, ultra hyperfractionation, uh, fractionation would find um, a better uh, a better implementation. Um, of course, cost activity effectivity is also important. Social economic advantages, and uh, not to forget the shorter acute phase, so people can return faster to the uh, to work or uh, to normal life. Okay, um, there are three important indications for uh, breast cancer brachytherapy. First of all, is the primary tumor in the sense, uh, as I said, of ultra hypofractionation. This is called accelerated partial breast irradiation, ABBI, or very accelerated partial breast irradiation, VABBI. Second would be a uh, local relapse, um, which would be in the sense of uh, salvage APBI or gray APBI. Um, the third indication I have not listed here because it's not uh, um, validated in the same manner as the first two indications, that will be the boost. The boost, brachytherapy in high risk uh, breast cancer, after uh, so following um, all breast irradiation uh, but this needs uh, some more research to become the same level of uh, evidence as these first two indications i plan to focus today uh, because of time reasons um, on uh, first uh, indication only but uh, uh, as we heard today um, um, due to um, one to a different schedule because one speaker uh, will not participate. Possibly I could show you a few slides of the second indication as well. I have prepared that as additional material. Okay. Um, the We start uh, as we have done yesterday in prostate cancer, here also in breast cancer with the old evidence of uh, here replacing mastectomy by, uh, at that time, new uh, concept of Veronese in Milan of partial breast uh, uh, resection. Um, he introduced that as the first doctor in the world, um, uh, this new concept, supplemented by postoperative adjuvant whole breast irradiation. As you can see here, um, there are two very important historical trials um, first of all, the, the Milan uh, trial uh, by Veronese and the uh, NSABP B06. Both trials was an extended follow-up of 20 years, showing exactly the same overall survival. Um, so, a key equivalence uh, between mastectomy and breast conservic therapy, consisting of breast conservic surgery and postoperative adjuvant full breast irradiation. On top of these two trials, uh, there is another phase C trial, which is not uh, on a slide, uh, EORTC trial, um, a European trial, um, in including uh, in contrast to the first two ones, not only T1 tumors, but also T2 tumors, 
and uh, and positive tumors. Um, and this trial also um, uh, actually showed the same uh, good results uh, uh, according equivalence to mastectomy at 20 years. So after these three important randomized uh, phase three trials, um, uh, breast conservic therapy has become standard of care uh, in the late 90s, beginning of the new century. But this, um, of course, it was then the question, and this was tested in five randomized trials. Yes, we know from these three important randomized trials that we need to supplement the breast conservic surgery with the adjuvant whole breast irradiation, but is that true? And that this was tested in five randomized trials, as you can see here, um, with long-term uh, follow-up, so between six years and 20 years. And uh, this trial showed clearly that it is not possible to go around postoperative adjuvant treatment with radiation because uh, otherwise the risk of local relapse with, with, will grow three, four times, so factor three to four. And from these uh, trials, we also learned that the annual local relapse rate after breast conservic, breast conservic uh, therapy uh, including uh, postoperative adjuvant full breast irradiation should be lower than 1%. That would be the ideal rate. Um, however, this concept, uh, first surgical concept of partial breast treatment was then took over by uh, skilled breast therapy radiation oncologist and uh, who tried to translate this in into the world of radiation. So meaning Yes, we know we need to treat the breast after breast conservic surgery with radiation, but do we need to do it uh, in, or in full breast manner or it is enough in uh, selected cases to reduce the uh, treatment volume to uh, the region of the tumor, so the peritumoral region. Um, and um, after some um, I would say attempts to uh, to uh, to reach or to implement this kind of technique by using bracket therapy. Um, pioneers, as you hear here, as you see here, King from Oxnard Clinic in US and also Vicini uh, from US from the William Baum Hospital, uh, Beaumont Hospital. They have developed uh, very important selection criteria in order to uh, treat the right population with this partial breast irradiation. As you can see here, lower uh, size of tumor, so T2, yes, but uh, limited to four centimeters or three centimeters, then uh, not more than three involved axillary lymph nodes um, and uh, surgical margins clear and so on. And uh, in these pioneers, uh, King and Vicini uh, have also established um, very important treatment schedules um, by using HDR or LDR bracket therapy. For HDR, for example, two schedules became um, evident and were used um, four times, uh, eight, sorry, eight times four gray, so eight fractions of four gray BID, or 10 fractions of three four gray um, BID again with HDR or 50 gray with LDR iodine 125. Um, these were the first uh, historical phase two trials, which had um, very critical importance. So similar to our um, phase two trials we have performed in Kiel for prostate cancer, which I showed you uh, yesterday. So these are the uh, uh, important uh, four uh, publications, if you want to read them. Um, and then based on this initial um, um, experience of the pioneers, um, phase two multi-institutional uh, and uh, also multinational trials were designed with a higher um, number of patients. But you see here the selection criteria were practically the same from the pioneers and also the type of uh, bracket therapy, um, PDR, HDR, very similar to the initial experience and the fractionation. And when I go back, for example, just to show you um, the 
in the initial experience, the local relapse rate was excellent, and also the cosmesis were excellent. This was the same too in this, uh, so up to 90%. Um, um, so the, results, the results were confirmed. These are the five important publications I want to read. So based on this um, very extended um, experience, multinational, especially from Europe and from US, um, over one decade, uh, our society, the Jack Estro Society, the Brackety Society of Europe, um, has developed um, and published um, in uh, um, Green Journal in 2009 a definition, a clear definition of this low risk group, uh, which is suitable, best suitable for um, uh, accelerated uh, partial price radiation for APVI. And this is here, as you can see here, age over 40 or 50 years. Unifocal tumor, T2, but smaller than three centimeter. Negative surgical margin, no EEC, near EEC, no uh, lymph nodes involved, and no lymphovascular uh, infiltration. And very important also, <clears throat> our Jekestro group has created um, a tumor, um, a target definition to be used in this APBI. And this was the tumor bed, as you can see here, <clears throat> plus two centimeter in all six partial direction, but minus the surgical resection margin, which comes from the pathology report. Meaning that the pathology report um, should include this information in all six uh, uh, spatial directions. Sorry for the interruption. <coughs> And the goal was <clears throat> not only to ideally uh, save or reduce the dose uh, applied in the organs at risk, like skin, thoracic wall, lung, and heart on the left hand side, but also to reduce almost to zero the dose in the uninvolved surrounding breast. So, based on this, <clears throat> Two important randomized trials were performed in Europe. Um, so, and these are actually pioneering, if you like, the new modern world of uh, bracket therapy in breast cancer. First uh, trial was a rather smaller one, uh, the Hungarian trial um, published by Polgar, um, uh, with a comparison of 130 patients versus 128. Um, so, APBI. Uh, with um, 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 HDR versus all breast radiation with 50 gray. And you see here in the table the fractionation used. Um, and uh, uh, Polga um, um, and co workers published uh, in the first publication five years results, and then in the second publication, even 10 years results. Um, then um, it was followed uh, the JKS from multi institutional European randomized trial with 100,084 patients. You see here that in both uh, trials, the selection criteria were very similar, and what became clear and was declared suitable by the JKS group was here included. And you see here on the right hand side of the table that. Uh, the local relapse rate were excellent, and also the cosmesis was excellent, at least equal to the uh, whole breast irradiation. And we had equivalence between these two arms in terms of local relapse rate and uh, two more endpoints. So um, here, these are the five publications uh, according to the level one evidence. Here, um, from the uh, Jack Estro trial, um, the um, uh, kaplan meier curves, according local recurrence uh, and uh, overall survival, showing absolute identical result. But uh, the skin toxicity was, was for APBI and the fibrosis, uh, skin toxicity was better and uh, uh, fibrosis was uh, 0%. Um, also, the JGSTRO group uh, published um, in a subset uh, um, publication in Lancet Oncology in 2017 the chronic toxicity profile showing 
uh, better uh, toxicity uh, grade two and three uh, according skin after a PBI versus um, um, uh, full breast. And this was also true in a third publication um, uh, in Lancet Oncology in 2018, according uh, quality of life or patient reporting outcomes, especially in breast symptom scores, which is, I think, evident. Um, here you see a typical uh, dose distribution and the implant on the left -hand side. So the typical implant uh, with um, uh, parallel equidistant uh, uh, um, needles first and then replaced by the tubes. Um, and here uh, in the CT, uh, the uh, dose distribution. And here you can see the very um, evident and very important advantage of APBI performed by multi-catheter interstitial bracket therapy according uh, the, uh, to lower the dose in the um, ipsilateral um, uh, thor thoracic wall in the ipsilateral lung and especially in the heart on the left hand side. Yeah. So compared with other techniques, this is clearly superior, this technique according toxicity, pros, so patient reporting outcomes and even saving of heart on the left hand side. This is now clearly reflected in all international guidelines. And here are the most important, so the ABS from the Amer American Society of uh, Breakage Therapy, the ERCR from a British Society, ASTRO again from America and the Jack Astro, our society in Europe. And here you have the five important publications if you'd like to uh, review these guidelines and recommendations. But I would like to also uh, talk about alternative uh, APBI techniques, which become um, also uh, important after level one evidence. For example, the APBI performed by IMRT with uh, 30 gray in five daily fractions. Uh, this was a randomized trial as well, as you can see with 520 patients randomizing breast irradiation uh, versus uh, 10 uh, versus uh, this um, um, APBI by MRT. The difference between this technique uh, and the multi-catheter interstitial inter inter uh, bracket therapy is the definition of PTV. So there was here edit margin of one centimeter to the CTV. This is the difference to a bracket therapy, where this is not necessary. And uh, even uh, it allow to extend that PTV margin four millimeter inside the ipsilateral lung, and, uh, but was limited three millimeter from the skin. So if you recall the case, I will just show you uh, with a very close heart to the target volume uh, on the left hand side. So. I would uh, clearly prefer the um, bracket therapy technique, multi catheter bracket therapy technique versus IMRT. However, other techniques were proved negative in level one evidence. So in phase, phase three trials, LEO trial uh, with 50 kV X-ray and target trial with um, fast electrons were uh, not equivalent to full breast irradiation. Uh, according, you see here, inferior five-year recurrence rate. You see also the publication. And also another phase three trial was uh, negative for 3D uh, conformal radiotherapy. So um, APBI by external beam by 3D uh, conformal radiotherapy instead of IMRT was compared with hyperfractionated uh, um, full breast irradiation, which became standard uh, in Europe. And this was um, not um, 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 was inferior because um, of increased late toxicity and inferior cosmesis. Um, this was the first publication in JCO in 2013, so the rapid trial, and the second publication with longer follow-up um, was in, made in Lancet 2019, but it showed the same uh, situation. So the um, 
um, uh, local early growth rate was similar, but uh, the rate uh, toxicity and uh, consumases were inferior. So if you do, if you want to do APBI BIM, use please IMRT and not 3D conform radiotherapy. Another important trial was the NSABP B39 slash RTOG0413 phase three trial, very large one from US comparing whole breast irradiation again with brachytherapy, but intracavitary brachytherapy using mammocyte or different single entry intracavitary devices. And this was also not equivalent with, failed to show equivalence um, to uh, whole breast irradiation due to inferior local relapse rate. You see here the publication in Lancet 2019 by Virginia and coworkers. Let me show you a bit of future perspectives. Um, this goes into direction of uh, shorter treatment time, so even more condensed um, and faster APBI, so very APBI, very accelerated APBI. Um, one interesting publication was made by a Japanese group by NOSE um, uh, with six fractions in, uh, and 36 gray. So just two nights in, in the hospitals or two uh, overnight treatment. And uh, from Jean-Michel Hanou-Levy from Nizza, France, uh, already a single fraction of 16 gray. Um, he used that uh, very accelerated partial breast irradiation in elderly patients. But as you can see here, the results were very nice according to local control, but also to uh, good to excellent cosmesis rate, which is uh, absolutely okay and uh, uh, enough. These are the most uh, important for publications according to very uh, accelerated APBI. And uh, I would like to mention one new source, so a new, completely new technique which I actually um, mentioned yesterday for prostate cancer. And this is the DART uh, source developed uh, by um, a group of um, researchers from Tel Aviv University. Um, and um, um, this is uh, one of the very many publications with preclinical data showing that by using this um, alpha emitter bracket therapy source treating the primary tumor, so this is the same topic we have discussed yesterday, very interesting topic. You might um, develop abscopal effects, and these uh, have um, effect on the distal uh, metastasis. And uh, if combining this with um, anti-tumor immunomodulation, this effect can be even stronger and longer term. And uh, if you like to read this publication in uh, uh, frontiers uh, in oncology uh, from last year in 2020, this shows very nice results with even clearance of in 70% of the cases of distant meds in the lung by treating um, these animals in the local uh, tumor with start bracket therapy and uh, use um, immune modulation at the same time. So this is a new approach which is uh, now really extensively, uh, was extensively uh, tested in the preclinical experiment in different uh, animals. But um, it's, it shows uh, this type of uh, yeah, double, as you see here, high LT uh, bracket therapy source uh, with multiple double uh, uh, strand um, st uh, breaks. Um, and we have for the breast, um, already an ongoing first in men trial in the cooperation of Russia and Germany um, in Opnix Institute. And I'd like to thank our friends and cooperation partners for this wonderful um, study we are still performing. Um, and here you see the first uh, patient we have implanted in Opnix Institute together. Uh, so. Uh, Germany and Russia together doing the work in this uh, setting. Uh, so thank you very much. I would like to recommend you uh, to read this uh, paper of accelerated partial breast irradiation if you're interested, showing all this uh, um, data, but also uh, data according uh, salvage, APBI, and also boost.
And I would like to show you now because I still have a few minutes time. If no, please tell me to stop. If not, I would show you uh, maybe some additional material according um, salvage uh, um, APBI, which is, um, I think, a very important indication. We should know about it. Uh, and uh, uh, I think this is now, uh, we can say, equivalent to mastectomy. Um, here I show you a patient from my uh, clinic, uh, 58 years old, with a first um, breast conserving surgery and whole breast irradiation for a low uh, risk um, early breast cancer in uh, January, February 2000. Then uh, in breast relapse, uh, um, you see here very long time after it in uh, May 2015. Then the patient came to us um, and we have performed a, a re uh, breast cancer surgery and uh, APBI for salvage with the same schedule of we are using actually for primary tumors, so eight fractions of four gray uh, HDR bracket therapy BIB, of course, with tamoxifen as well. And you see here that uh, on the left hand side, it was the uh, BIRATS 5 lesion in MRI pre-treatment, uh, pre-salvage treatment. And um, then um, after the treatment, uh, six months, 12 months, um, uh, disappeared, no skin toxicity, no toxicity at all, no fibrosis, no necrosis, no fatigue, no heart problems, no lung problems. Um, and also if two and a five, two and two point five years, the same outcome. So in the meantime, we have here also very nice phase two trials showing uh, very good uh, results. First of all, I'd like to mention the work of um, Benjamin Gouge, Gouge from um, uh, Barcelona, Spain, um, showing uh, even the results of, of 10 years after re-PBI with a local control of 89.4% survival 96.7% and very good cosmetic results in 90%. No grade three and four late complications. Then again, our friend and fellow Jean-Michel Hanulevi from Nizza, France, with um, a very nice publication um, in Red Journal in 2004, showing um, uh, freedom from uh, uh, distant metastasis um, um, and uh, local relapse rate, um, uh, freedom from local relapse um, in 78% uh, and 86%, and overall survival at five years war was uh, uh, 92%. Um, and uh, uh, a very nice study from uh, Mrs. Kawadona, Dr. Kawadona from Vienna, Austria, from uh, Richard Potter Group. Um, published in the Green Journal in 2012. Again, uh, partial breast irradiation for salvage after uh, second breast conservative treatment um, instead of mastectomy with local control rates of 93%, survival 87%, and uh, very low, uh, higher graded uh, toxicity, a very good cosmetic outcome and also they measured uh, quality of life as well, which was comparable to the primary breast conserver, conserving therapy. And um, recently uh, our group uh, has analyzed um, in uh, our um, European database uh, comparison, um, um, matched uh, comparison by propensity score uh, um, salvage mastectomy versus second conservative uh, uh, surgery and a second ipsilateral breast tumor for the second ipsilateral breast tumor event uh, then with um, ray PBI. And you see here that uh, in the meantime published in Red Journal fully, um, there was no difference in uh, disease-free survival, uh, no difference in five-year overall survival and also the tumor control was excellent and absolutely equivalent. So I think we can conclude here also that uh, um, rear PBI is a very 
a very good technique for second for relapse inverse relapse uh, after first conservative treatment and the second conservative treatment can be performed so thank you very much